diagram shows important conversion processes in the oil industry. Okay, sure. How is kerosene produced from crude oil in process one? Let's see. Process one. Okay, yeah. Fractional distillation. Classic question. Pretty simple, but annoying, annoying, annoying. So, fractional distillation. Once again, theory. If you don't know it, you don't know it, unfortunately. So, try and remember this stuff. So, crude oil is vaporized. Um, then you can say it passed into a fractioning, fractionating column. Okay, and then we can just say that there's gradient, there's a temperature gradient, so I guess it's um, higher temp at the bottom and at the top. This means that the shorter hydro carbon chains um, that have a lower boiling point. So the ones that have a lower boiling point, they basically rise, rise higher towards the top. And then um, we can say that the kerosene condense, condenses at a level due to its boiling point. Don't need to be specific here because you don't want to get it wrong. You can just be general because like, the kerosene is going to condense a certain level because of the specific boiling point. Say, um, yeah, say it's below refinery gases and gasoline fractions above diesel or fuel oil, whatever you want to say. But yeah, this is just a simple answer. Okay, uh, C12 H26 present in kerosene. Okay, in process 2 C12 H26 cracked. Choose two more. Mol molecules of ethene and one molecule of another hydrocarbon. Complete the equation for the cracking of C12H26. Okay, so um, we're just going to count the carbons here. So uh, four. So you know that's four. I mean, there's C12 over there. So we know that there's going to be a C8. And then uh, by the same logic, we're going to see it's eight. And then we're going to see that one is going to be 26. It's going to be C2 C8 H H18. Okay. Why is cracking a useful process in the oil industry? Well, uh, cracking is going to be. Um, let's just put it down. Where's my text box? Oh, there we go. Okay, so cracking um, cracking is useful because it produces short chain alkanes, uh, which can be used as fuels. It also produces alkenes like ethene, and um, which can be used to make polymers like polyethene. There we go. Okay, this is the equation for one of the reactions that might occur during process three. Process three. Let's see. Process three is ethene to chloroethene. Okay, sure. What is the name of this reaction? Well, we know that this involves an alkene, and alkenes undergo addition, not substitution. Substitution is for alkanes. So alkene, we just hope this is an addition reaction. Yeah, pretty simple. Complete the equation for the polymerization of chloroethene in process four. Well, this is really easy. Um, yeah, really easy. Because remember that when we're going to make the polymer, we're going to need to remove the double bond and we're going to just do that so the double bond is no longer there and we're going to go up H up down H down CL up H then you want to draw a line from here going out of here there we go and that's just how you do it it's really simple and I want one little touch to forget uh, no, no, not to forget is that these extension bonds need to go outside of the brackets. Don't forget that. That's to show like it extends to form polymer. And also, you want to talk about how it's n units. So don't forget to put an n in the bottom right. That is how you draw the uh, polymer. So explain why the disposal of polymer such as polychloroethene is difficult. Okay, sure. So why is it difficult? Well. Polymers like this polychloroethylene, they are inert. 
unreactive. So they won't naturally biodegrade. Okay, simple, simple, really simple, just logic. Okay, another issue is that when you burn them, they produce toxic fumes, uh, especially for this polychlorine. And yeah, that is the question 